All right, Lloyd Macedo, speaking to you from LloydMacedo.com. Who's Lloyd Macedo? Think personal branding. Uh, date is 21st May 2023. Time right now is uh, 12.55 in the night. That means it has crossed midnight. So more like one in the morning. Um, in this video, I will speak to you about the, the topic headline is why is it that this new generation is harder to work with? Okay. Uh, in fact, um, I was speaking to a friend of mine who's a director in Canada, and uh, we were talking about youngsters being employed, and you know, we were just uh, checking their resumes and uh, talking about the interview skills and talking about why some companies prefer not to take youngsters. And uh, as we were talking, um, we exchanged a lot of ideas. But now here's the question. Is it that this new generation is hard to work with? Or is it the older generation that is us? Are we, uh, you know, difficult to work for? So you'll be surprised to know that initially I'd made a video of 30 minutes while walking outside. But when I came home, I realized, no, I want to do justice to this topic, which is why I have, I literally sat the whole day, a whole day, thinking of all the reasons. And I came up with 19. I'm actually looking at the computer screen. I have 19 reasons why this generation, that is the youngsters of today, uh, they are harder to work with and companies prefer not to employ them. Now, what I want you to do is, um, you can watch this video at 2x speed so that um, you, know, you can listen to it faster. But take down the points that I tell you and if you feel I'm wrong, if you feel, hey man, you're a boomer, you're an outdated guy, you don't know what you're talking, feel free, put it in the comments below and tell me where exactly am I wrong? Because I can assure you this much, the points that, I'm, that I've thought about, that I've put here, are very real today. And I'm, I'm doing this as being a well-wisher. So if you can... If you really have the mindset that you want to improve, take these points. I'll try to put the summary in the description and the timestamps so you know which point. But try to use it to improve. Okay, so without taking any more time, here are the 19 points why this new generation is harder to work with and uh, the same 19 reasons why companies or employees or business people prefer not to employ youngsters. They prefer experienced people. So the first point, point number one, digital distraction. Um, today, because of the invention of the smartphone, the free internet, the apps which are there, the softwares, the technology that goes, everything has become super addictive. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, WhatsApp, YouTube, podcast, online games, porn, emails, shopping, dating, uh, coaching, trend trending items viral stuff controversies hot button issues updates on uh, news flashes fashion statements literally every single thing and now you have chat gpt you have open ai you have every single thing on this smart device no wonder people are you know the youngsters are literally looking at the phone like this okay when they're going to toilet so many times i've seen accidents take place where they are trying to cross the road or they are trying to walk looking at their phones now, this was not available in my generation. It's available at your generation. Now, you might say, Lloyd, doesn't everyone have a phone? These habits are formed right from the time you're born. My small little baby, who is four years old, has already taken a liking to the um, you know, tablet. And that is why we make sure that she only looks at educational um, programs and under supervision, and only for half an hour, but related to study and language, okay? But there are so many other youngsters who are unsupervised. How many of you have your smartphone, you go outside and nobody's looking? Now, I'll tell you where the problem is. The problem is <coughs> the amount of time you spend on it. I can assure you this much, minimum, you must be spending looking at your phone at least four to eight hours a day, minimum. That four to eight hours a day 
if you had spent on developing a skill, learning something new, or dedicating it to your career, your life would have been changed. I can assure you this much. Someone who is training for the Olympics or for a competition or for something like uh, the world's best, they keep their phones aside. So the first one that today's generation is cursed with is digital distraction. And believe it or not, it does impact you, your behavior and thinking, which I'll speak about more. That's point number one. Point number two, why the new generation today is harder to work with. They are literally experts at every single thing. I'll give you a specific example. I spoke to this 23-year-old guy. Okay, uh, He paid me for my service. And out of the questions that he asked me, he paid me for my uh, one hour. I took down the questions, some of it. He spoke on cognitive, he wanted my opinion and thoughts on cognitive dissonance, prefrontal cortex, ADHD, Dunning-Kruger effect, tos toxic masculinity, modafinil, Adderall, nootropics, Shopify, uh, Yuval Noar Hariri, Harari, yeah. Biohacking, Freemasons, OpenAI, Andrew Tate, Jordan Peterson, Andrew Huberman, uh, Tim Ferriss, Ketogenesis, um, and there are quite a number of other things which he wanted about sex and relationships. Now, here's the funny thing. You might say, wow, the guy's so intelligent, he's so smart. Well, guess what? He, he knows all this. He loves all this. He is studying and researching about all this, but he doesn't have a job. He has not completed his college. He believes he's too smart for the system and um, he doesn't want to work. He wants uh, to provide his expertise and he had taken my services to be a personal brand. Now, just imagine a guy with no education, a guy who doesn't have a degree, but he reads so much of the internet all these points that I gave you. He is an expert. He considers himself an expert in all this. It's like a jack of all. And that is exactly what is happening to today's youngsters. So many people in my group, youngsters, they'll speak on politics, they'll speak on cryptocurrency, they'll speak on love, marriage. But if you ask them a question about their career or their job, they are just vanilla average. So the second reason why companies and people who are a senior, they <clears throat> prefer not uh, employing younger generation is they are smart for all the other things which are totally useless, pointless, but what really matters, they are not experts at it. Number three, why the new generation is harder to work with? It's very simple. I call it the Greta Thunberg effect. Um, I think Jordan Peterson said it best. Before you go around wanting to change the world, at least sort out your room. Keep your room in order. Greta Thunberg and the generation like her, they want to change the world. They want to lecture companies. They want to lecture politicians. They want to tell countries what to do. Do this, do that, ban this, ban that. But then who's going to pay for your education? See, just because her parents are rich and uh, she doesn't need to work, maybe she can get unemployment benefits. How many youngsters today are focusing on equal rights, LGBTQ issues and politics and all. There are, there are boys who literally uh, were in part of my group. They are no longer there. They literally, anytime there's anything related to politics, BJP or Congress, they will not go to uh, the school. They'll not go to college. They'll literally go and fight. They will sit on bikes. They will cause a ruckus. Why? Because they want to change the world. They passionately believe about their country. They passionately believe about politics but they're not earning anything. They're not studying anything. Who's going to pay for all the bills? Now, Greta Thunberg, and see the fun. She uh, lives in a nice, comfortable house with electricity. She uses the internet. She travels private jet. She lives a life of luxury, staying in five-star hotels. But she lectured the world that you have to use fossil fuels. In fact, let me ask you a very simple question. Uh, the Sahara Desert. It's a massive desert. Saudi is a massive, uh, very hot and dry country. Why don't they build solar panels all across the desert? Have you ever thought about it? Why? Why countries that are windy, why don't they have all, you know, like wind panels? Why? Wind turbines. 
just do a little bit of research and you will understand why it's very easy to talk about this but not easy to implement at all. In fact, it causes more harm than good. So point number three is <coughs> this generation busy wants to change the world but not themselves. Point number four, why this new generation is hard to work with is they use social media to destroy companies' name, reputation and air their dirty laundry. A very simple example, I gave the example of a Starbucks employee who was working with glasses and a guy or girl, I don't know, started to, I think it was a guy, started to cry. Oh, they're making me work. Oh, they're very impolite with me. Oh, I have to stand Oh, my hands up in my legs, whatever. And, uh, you, you know, these. Uh, there was one case in Australia where the lady, I think, referred to this guy as guy or something and he identifies himself as a transgender. And the next thing you know is... Uh, he tried to physically assault uh, the husband or something like that. So people are busy using social media to air their problems, to talk nonsense. And companies are very afraid to employ these individuals because they, they, they just don't want drama. Let's, let's assume you're running a business. You employ some of these youngsters who have this habit for any small disagreement. They will go on Facebook Live and they'll talk about the company. And next thing you know, all these so-called youngsters, these groups, they'll come together and spoil the company name. Who wants this drama? And uh, that's, that's one of the main reasons. And many companies are paranoid about this because they don't want any social issue, uh, especially in Canada. If you uh, call someone with the wrong pronoun or they can even say, oh, because they are transphobic, they'll just put this on social media and before you know it, it spreads like wildfire. Even if the allegation is false, the youngster, you know, what do they lose? But the company loses a lot in terms of its brand value. So that's number four. <coughs> number five, why the new generation is harder to work with is instant gratification and immediate results. See, when I was young, um, or even today, if I have to do work, I drink coffee or... Uh, I might just take an energy drink. But today's generation, these are some of the things that they ask me. Um, they have actually asked me, huh? what do you, uh, do you, uh, you remember I spoke to you about the 20 year old nootropics and modaflin and Adderall. These are mind pills. These are, which are not at all recommended because they have solid side effects. So they have asked me about cryptocurrency. They have, sorry, they have asked me about the limitless pill. They have asked me about steroids related to bodybuilding. Youngsters, huh? they have asked me about which cryptocurrency can I invest. Even though I don't know anything about cryptocurrency, can you put me in touch with someone where I can put a thousand and make it like, you know, 10,000 or more. They are busy asking, just check online. How many videos related to hacks, productivity hacks, performance hacks. Everyone is looking for a shortcut towards success. In fact, the most disturbing among all this is where females are cutting off their breasts, the young men are cutting off their testicles. Why? Because they feel if I do this, I'll get immediate results. I'll immediately feel good. If I take testosterone, I'll feel it. You know, this, this kind of behavior only leads to a lot of problems. And that is why, because youngsters are going through all this confusion uh, and they're emotionally not well, companies don't want to take the burden because just imagine if uh, an accident takes place or they cry or they break down or it becomes a police case. And this has actually happened in some places that I know, especially in schools. Just check how many teachers in schools are losing out on their jobs just because a student is making a, a stupid emotional claim. So the problem is this generation wants immediate results. And if they don't get what they want, they make a big noise about it. And it's not possible to work in a company if you want immediate results. Uh, number six, why this new generation is harder to work with. They have exceptionally either unrealistic results or the expectations are way too high. Okay, they have unrealistic expectations. Sorry. Um, I'll give you a simple thing. You know, in my video that I spoke about Andrew Tate, and I'm not a, uh, I admire him as a brand, but I don't admire him as a coach. Now, because I criticized him, a lot of youngsters who love this guy as hero worship, they were asking me, 
Hey man, where's your Bugatti? When I asked him, what is a Bugatti? If you're really a man, you'll buy a Bugatti. Only men can afford luxury, you know, cars like that. Oh, what is the salary that you're earning? You're only earning like $10,000 a month. Ha! <laughs> uh, this guy, Grant Cardone, earning $100,000 a month. This other guy is earning $1 million. So, you know, when you have all these expectations from others, see, it's not for them. They don't have this expectation for themselves. What they're trying to say is, if you earn this, then I will respect you. When you have an employer who employs these guys, and when things don't go well, and all of a sudden, hey, how much money have you got? Where, what is your Bugatti? Where is your Bugatti? Or how much? Yeah, you know, they, they just don't want disrespect. Even in my groups, sometimes I get these youngsters who, when they want to join the group, they're very humble. But later on, they start bragging about how much money they are making. I, I just throw these idiots out. Now, I don't know whether it's fake or real. But, you know, you're, you're putting on a facade, an image that is not true. And proof of this is go to Instagram, see how the girls are trying to show how they look. Filters, no, nothing is real. Check on Facebook, even go to LinkedIn nowadays. People are portraying themselves as this mature, amazing, young intellect. But what, what are they putting? All garbage. And a company wants people who work, not people who show all this stuff online and uh, start expecting, oh, if you want my respect, earn this. Point number seven, why this new generation is hard to work with is they're trying to redefine the workplace, the work culture, and the traditions related to work. Let me explain. <coughs> I'm, I'm sure you must have heard work-life balance. Yeah. Uh, work uh, four days a week and three days off. Okay. And some of them have even said uh, about, oh, I, I, I sometimes uh, read the comments youngsters put, I will work only for how much I'm paid, not a second more, not a minute more. Okay. Now you might say, hey, there's nothing wrong. You pay me for one hour, I work for one hour. Okay. Tell me, here's my question to you. People who have achieved greatness in music, business, sports, their career, even working as an employee for a corporate career, how many have achieved greatness just working for fixed number of hours and not more? Whether you want to be a master at chess, whether you want to learn karate, whether you want to learn, become a world-class DJ, just imagine saying, no, I'll work only two days and you know five days I'll take off because I need to have a balanced life. Which country in the world has achieved a greatness that follows four day on, three day off? You'll get relaxed people. You'll get people who will enjoy, but they will live mediocre lives. So if your value system is being mediocre by saying, oh, I need to balance. Her. And you know, our, this generation is very sensitive. They're like, oh, I can't take stress. Oh, I need to balance. I need to sleep. I need to rest. Um, an employer who is really ambitious wouldn't want people like this. And that is one of the reasons why they don't want to employ these youngsters. They don't want the headache that they even have. I want to work four days a week. No, thanks. Point number eight, why this new generation is hard to work with is lack of real world experience. Uh, <coughs> I'll give you my example. When I was 20, I was a different Loy Macedo. When I was 30, I was a different Loy Macedo. When I became 40, I changed. Today, I'm nearly going to be 50. I'm 46. At every phase, 20, 30, 40, 50, I changed, I evolved, I grew, I learned more. Loy Mesido at 50 knows much more than Loy Mesido at 20. 30 years of more experience. And that is something only someone with experience and age has. Someone who's 20 year old who has just come out of college or someone who's even 30 cannot have this experience. Whether it's leadership, whether it's emotional maturity, whether it's, I don't know, um, analytical skills. You can't, uh, you can't learn theory. You can't just read or listen to a podcast and get this wisdom. Wisdom, experience, expertise comes with time. And that is something today's generation just doesn't have. Generation has only all virtual knowledge, all, uh, you know, something that you Google or Wikipedia. They don't have the real experience. Real experience is, you know, like they say, when you lift your sleeves, get your arms, get your hands dirty. Point number nine, why this new generation is hard to work with is 
this new generation wants to challenge and change the hierarchical system. Like for example, say in Thailand now, Thailand, they have this new minister, a uh, young guy who is graduate from Harvard Business School. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, you have some countries where the minister is only 21 years old. I don't know what is her name, uh, which country that is. But have you noticed, even uh, New Zealand, that, that uh, Jacinta, she is pretty young. But have you noticed that, uh, yes, they do win the position, but the country is not better off. It doesn't improve. It doesn't become better. Why is that? I'm not trying to say that every young young blood who comes is going to make things worse. Yes, they come out with fresh new ideas, but your fresh new ideas versus experienced people, processes, procedures, culture, tradition. You can't change. Mohammed bin Salman, okay. He took over using an iron hand, an iron fist, and uh, very controversial. You, you can definitely say it's not in democratic means. But now, is he making things better? You know, just think about it. You might say, yeah, he's making now females can, no need to take permission. But I'll tell you, if you check with people from Saudi, if you actually have friends who are working there and you check with them and people who are pure Saudi, they are not happy at all and they can't talk about it. So if you're a dictator and that kind of guy, fine, you can make a change. But if you're talking of a democratic process and you are trying to reinvent the wheel, it's not going to happen, man. Very simple. Um, Vox, B-O-X, Vice News, BuzzFeed, a new way of sharing news, a new way of reporting. What happened to all three? Bankrupt. Why did they become bankrupt? Even though they bought in a new a strategy of doing things, new way of doing things, BBC World is still there, CNN is still there, Fox News is still there. You might say, oh, they are not great or they are boring. Yes, but they have the experience and they have the track record. These newbies, they came and they vanished. So, yes, the new youngsters, they come, they want to make a big splash and change. But if you check longevity, they don't survive. They don't sustain. So many youngsters come and they want to change the entire system because they think, oh, I'm smarter. Even cryptocurrency, <coughs> what happened finally in the end? Point number 10, why this new generation is hard to work with? Um, they try to, um, for better or for a lack of a better word, I would say, they try to completely change the system uh, and try to make it easier, which actually makes it harder. I'll give you an example. Chat GPT and OpenAI. How many people today are using it to write essays, to write letters, uh, to, you know, uh, do paintings, to do images? Do you actually think it's helping them? Like, for example, you take a photograph. You take a photograph with your iPhone. You put some digital imaging or that software that is there. And you think you're a great photographer? I'll tell you, the person who actually uses a real life uh, camera and who does work the traditional way will always be paid more. That is why a chef, an actual chef, will be paid much more than a robot. Uh, a person who uses AI and all that, you may be able to have computer generated uh, essays, but the person who writes with their own creativity will always get paid more. And I'll, I'll tell you just one thing. Those youngsters who are now getting addicted to chat GPT and open AI, your foundation, your skills will only go back to us. I had to learn the art of writing and the art of making these videos. You can check my previous videos, how they went. They were so much worse. It's because every single day I would practice, 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 practice. Even the art of writing. I didn't even know how to write 50 words to 100 words. Today, I'm able to write, you know, three, four thousand. It may not be perfect in terms of grammar or spelling, you know, there'll be spelling mistakes, but I can work without um, chat GPT or open AI. The ones who are using it now, you'll forever be addicted to it. So that's one more reason why uh, they prefer old timers who really develop those skills, which takes years rather than today's generation that 
tries to act smart. Point number 11, why this new generation is hard to work with? The only loyalty that they have, this younger generation, is to themselves, nobody else. You know, if you check uh, 1950s or 60s, one person in a village, let's say a village or a town, they would work in a factory for 30 years or 40 years, right from the age of 20 till the day they would retire, they'd get a gold watch and a certificate. Okay, that was in the 50s, 1940s, 50s. Then uh, it, you know, trend began uh, in the 70s and 80s, where people would work for 10 years in a company, changed three times, and that was about it. Then came 90s to 2000s, where people would work in a company for five years. Then it became like every three years change. Today, I, I mean, literally every youngster just wants to work with a company per hour or per project. There's no loyalty. So then an employer thinks, why should I invest and train this person? Why should I teach this person? Because if I teach anything, this person is anyway going to take those skills, that effort that I put and go elsewhere. So they prefer investing in an old timer who will stick with them for very many years. That's one, that's the 11th reason why uh, this new generation, they don't get employed, the older generation does. Number 12 is <coughs> the lack of maturity. I told you, no. Why must it at 20? Why must it at 30? Why must it at 40? Why must it at 50? I'm, I'm a very different person than I was. In my 20s and 30s, I used to debate, argue, fight, fight verbally and waste time on girls and do these crazy things. Today, I don't, I just don't want to argue and debate with anyone. Like when I was young, I used to read uh, aggressively, like literally 8 to 12 hours a day, I used to read books. Today, I not want to read the whole book. I might just read a few lines to see what I can apply to my work. It's not that I don't read books. I still listen to podcasts at 2x speed. I still read books uh, to check what idea I can get out of them. But the person that I was in my 20s versus today, entirely two different things. Today, my priority is money and savings. That's about it. No showing off, no acting smart. And that comes with maturity. I don't think today's youngsters especially who are addicted to their smartphone, they have that kind of maturity. Uh, point number 13, why this new generation is hard to work with is because they live, breathe, exist, and sleep in a virtual world. Um, and they take their values from there. Like, I'll give a small example. Go to TikTok and listen to the management advice on TikTok. Listen to the management advice on LinkedIn. Absolute and utter garbage, serious nonsense. They will tell you about uh, don't work too hard, don't work if they're not paying you, if they don't respect you. They are not management experts. They are not Tom Peters or they are not uh, industry, you know, authoritative figures. They are just some YouTuber or TikToker or someone. And you're busy listening to a guy who is saying, don't work, don't work hard. Live your life. You, you know, live to the fullest. Enjoy. I mean... If you're going to follow that and then you don't succeed and then you realize, man, why is my life not working? In fact, I have started to hate LinkedIn because the number of videos that are there, they are just being forwarded from TikTok, from YouTube, from Reels, from Instagram. It's utter nonsense. So what I've realized is this new generation, they live in this virtual world and they take their values from there, which is very confusing and employers don't want confused people. Point number 14, why this new generation is harder to work with. They are thinking, see in the previous point I said the ideas were formed from TikTok and LinkedIn. Here, point number 14 is their thinking is formed. Now, what do you mean by thinking? I have this, I have this uh, policy which I tell youngsters, uh, respect must be earned, okay? Don't go around demanding respect. You know what's the funny thing? These very same youngsters who are following my channel, who consume my content, who want favors from me, who want my mentoring, coaching, sometimes they tell me, uh, even you, uh, like, you know, if you're a youngster, you call the person elder to you, sir, madam. They say, hey, Loy, listen, if you want me to call you sir or mister or whatever, you have to earn my, uh, you have to earn my respect. You have to earn your stripes. I'm following your own advice. Earn your side. 
for me, it's very simple. Just bugger off here. I'm not interested. You know, just imagine this kind of attitude they bring into the company. Instead of looking at someone who's senior and calling him, yeah, I know, in the West, in uh, US, they don't call sir, but in the military, they call sir. Okay, why? Because obedience is important. You can't take people for granted. Don't take kindness as someone's weakness. Respecting elders, giving them the respect that they deserve. You don't lose anything other than you being humble. So these kids who are like, you know, calling people with their names and acting like buddy, buddy. I, I seriously hate it. I can't stand it. And I know many people, they can't tolerate this kind of arrogance, ignorance, or confidence. Point number 15, I told you, ideas are formed in the virtual world. Thinking is formed. And then point number 15 is the belief systems solidify. What do I mean by belief systems? Um, you check with any youngster, if he sees someone with 1 million subscribers or a post that has 50,000 likes and shares, they'll be very impressed. Because according to them, this is the new social currency. Likes, comments, shares. That is impressive to them. In fact, uh, many youngsters, especially girls, they get so impressed with this girl started her OnlyFans account. She can buy her own car. She can live her own house. She has bought her own uh, mansion or apartment. They're very impressed with all this. Just imagine someone who's showing their body, who is performing acts of sex, who is uh, even uh, engaging in prostitution. They get respect. So just imagine how these youngsters, their belief system is formed. There are articles which are serving these youngsters, telling them, oh, she was working as a lawyer, but she was only earning basic wage. Now she is a porn star. It's called star or oh, only fans celebrity. So, you know, your belief systems are formed. And once that is formed, <coughs> it's very hard to change. That is why people, even youngsters, they are crazy about only fans, cryptocurrency. They are fans of being a coach and being an expert with zero life experience and they want to earn big money. <coughs> Point number 16, why this new generation is harder to work with. With the belief systems of the previous point, habits are formed. What are the habits? With your smartphone today, you can see porn. You can, uh, you can go shopping. You can uh, get into dating whether or even cyber sex. You can uh, literally order food. You can, um, you know, go for, you can check out Airbnb. You don't even need to visit the place. Um, you can uh, order, like literally anything. Like you can even have an Uber. <clears throat> the apps have literally impacted the person so much. You'll see most of the youngsters, they like to sit in one place, not move anywhere. You know, in my younger days, if you wanted to take a break, you'd go out and play football or cricket or uh, just run around and have fun with your friends. Today, taking a break is opening up your iPad, opening up the computer, opening up your phone, and being in that virtual world. Those habits impact not only your physical health, your physical structure, your mind, your complete self. And that is not healthy for an uh, employer when he employs someone who is 24-7 on his phone. Number 17, uh, why this new generation is harder to work with? Because of these habits, which I mentioned in the previous point, your character is formed. Um, I'll give you a small example for that. If you check my YouTube comments, you'll get people who have spoken bad about me, threatened me, uh, insulted me, insulted my wife, even gave, even I've, I've shown people emails, messages, sexualizing my four-year-old daughter. Okay, now how did this character get formed? That someone can literally do this. Why? Because they know they are anonymous. They know that nobody can track them. Unless, of course, it becomes a police case. Okay, so don't you think this character, this habit that they have formed, becomes part of their character where they attack men or women or they look at girls sexually? In, in fact, uh, some of my clients who are models or very beautiful women. Young boys from India. Hey babes. Hey babes. Just imagine. And the boy is old enough to be 
her son. A boy who is young enough to be her son is telling, hey babes, hey darling, hey, you know, you're sexy in this. Just imagine the character that is being formed. In fact, you'll see many youngsters, because they watch so much of porn, they look at women as sexual objects and girls, they have their sense of worth by putting up sexy photographs, revealing themselves. And then they also opt for surgeries, they opt for all these damaging decisions can literally destroy their life and that is why you know when their character is so sensitive the employer prefers not having such people <clears throat> point number 18 why this new generation is hard to work with is they have a different set of priorities again i told you me loy missy at 20 i was different 30 i'm different 40 i'm different today nearly going to be 50 today my only priority is earning for my wife earning for my baby and saving, earning for myself. So 24-7 I'm working. Like, just imagine, now it's 1.31 in the night. I'm working. Why am I working? Why? Because this is my priority. But if you if you meet me when I was 20 years old, I would be going to a nightclub, I would be going with my friends, uh, watching a movie, going to meet some girl, taking her to bed. Different set of priorities. So people, when they are older, and when they have responsibilities, when they have that kind of maturity, they take their work very seriously. They like this, you know, work is worship, worship is God. So in, in the same way, if you employ someone who is young, he's adventurous, he's fearless, he's a cowboy. He wants to do so many things. But if you take a person who has a family, who is grounded, who has responsibility, they don't do all this. And last, if not the least, the final point, why this new generation is harder to work with is because of their mindset. I told you, you know, uh, when you're young, you think you're invincible. You think you have a whole life ahead of you. You think uh, nothing will happen to you. That's why so many youngsters, they like to uh, practice skateboarding. They do all these stunts uh, with the bike. Um, they do these brick dance with different moves that can literally break your joints. They do bodybuilding. Even I did bodybuilding so heavy that, uh, you know, the bar is bending and they take steroids. And we do a lot of stupid shit when we're young, like me having sex with multiple partners. And today, um, at, you know, 46, I, I'm i never going to do anything that I did in my 20s. But youngsters take a lot of risks. And if they take risks with their personal life, they will take risks with their professional life. They will take risks with everyone who is involved with them. And that can be dangerous. And <clears throat> when you are that fearless, your overconfidence, your arrogance, your ignorance mixed together makes it a very dangerous formula. For older people, that humility is there, that I'm human. I can break. I can lose my job. I may not get something. I better be humble. So that is why employers prefer taking someone from the older generation than young. So overall, <coughs> I've given you 19 points, 19 points as to why um, this new generation is harder to work with and employers don't prefer taking them. So I've given you the 19 points. You tell me which among these 19 is wrong. Do you agree, disagree? And let me know what are your thoughts because I told you, I genuinely wanted to give you points. I sat a lot of time thinking about this the whole day so that I could come with something of value. So good, bad, ugly, feel free. You can easily prove me wrong if you, uh, you know, comment down below. Let me know what do you think. And uh, yes, what are the solutions? I'll be very interested to know. What do you think? Uh, having said that, this is me signing off. You guys take care. Go.